Hello, welcome back to Bookish. Today I thought I would weigh in on the discussion that's just kind of getting started here in our corner of BookTube about trigger warnings and whether or not trigger warnings should be placed in or printed as part of the front material uh, in a book. This topic came up during a live stream uh, on Noah's channel, Everyone Who Reads Must Converse, uh, in which someone pointed out that some YA books already carried these trigger warnings, which were printed in the front material of the book, and there was some discussion about whether or not it was a good idea, but that discussion moved on uh, relatively quickly. I saw that Matthew at Paperback Chunky uh, had made a video about this, which I thought was excellent. I'll leave a link to that uh, down below. I thought he did a really good job of kind of working through a lot of the potential uh, problems of those trigger warnings uh, and their impact on publishing and reading, etc. Uh, so please, you know, go check out his video. In some ways, I I'm going to disagree with some of the things Matthew said. When I worked through some of the things I saw as a potential problem for trigger warnings uh, printed in the front material of books, you know, I came to some kind of different conclusions. But as always, I'll tell you, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm giving you uh, my opinion and I am encouraging you to listen to all opinions and to decide on your own uh, which one you think uh, is right and which one you think is wrong. So just to start off with, I'm going to tell you right now where I am in my thinking right now, having thought about the issue, having read about the issue, having listened to and watched videos about this exact issue. At this point in time, I don't have a problem with the idea of publishers printing trigger warnings as part of the front material of their books. And the reason for that is that I do believe there are some people who, pick, who have experienced such severe trauma in their life that having a trigger warning at the front of the book that warns them off of reading that book and, and at least makes them aware that when they're reading that book, they're going to be exposed to something which may be traumatic to them again, may cause them in some way to relive uh, that trauma I think that's a, an okay thing. I, I have a tendency to lean towards warning people away from or trying to prevent people from experiencing pain or reliving trauma. You know, I think that is on the whole a good thing. That doesn't mean that I don't think that there aren't potential dangers in doing it. And I will say up front that one of the problems we have in this country right now, oh, wow, that's an old man statement. Oh, that's an old man lead in. One of the problems we have in this country right now is that we think if we can't come up with a perfect solution, the solution is no solution. Well, that's just dumb. You're never gonna come up with a perfect solution. We've never had a perfect solution. Nothing works out perfectly. They're always going to be some harms and some benefits. And what I think we have to try to do is to weigh the benefits with the harms. And so that's kind of what I've done as I tried to work my way through all the potential dangers I can see in printing trigger warnings as part of the front material of books. Now, as far as I know, this has only been done in YA books and I haven't read any of those YA books, but you know, there we go. Uh, and if we're talking about YA books, then I'm even more supportive of doing it in YA books than I am probably in non-YA books. So I tried to think about some issues. So one of the issues, and this is an issue that Matthew raised, which I think is really important, is what impact will those trigger warnings and knowing their book may have these trigger warnings applied, what impact will that have on the writer? Will writers start tailoring their books to avoid getting, you know, those trigger warnings printed as a part of their book. In other words, will they do what movie uh, directors do, and that is cut things to avoid getting an R rating, or to avoid, or to make sure they can get, at least get an R rating. And is that necessarily, you know, a bad thing? I will tell you that I think authors self-censoring <clears throat> material and thinking about and having to think about the potential commercial aspects of what they do uh, and of the art they are creating is problematic. I do see that is as a concern. And certainly, you know, in the world we live in, there are very few authors who, uh, you know, attain the kind of wealth and power that, that some of the most prominent authors in the United States have who can then be above these kinds of concerns. And so I do think that that is legitimate and that is uh, a worry. And I don't know that I have a solution for that other than time. And I'll kind of get back to this in a minute. Uh, so the second thing is, second thing I thought is, will readers then avoid important books because they contain 
things that would you know cause a trigger warning to be printed at the front of the book. Will a reader pick up uh, Gone with the Wind? I saw Steve had a rant about Gone with the Wind. Will readers pick up uh, Gone with the Wind? Uh, and see the trigger warning about racism in there and go, okay, well, I'm not going to read Gone with the Wind. Well, to be honest with you, in my personal opinion, it's not a tragedy if people don't read Gone with the Wind. That's my personal opinion. But if we we're going to do it with a book that I, I do care about much more, uh, let's say uh, uh, The Sound and the Fury or some other book by William Faulkner, you know, and they see that there's a, or we could do uh, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, um, you know, trigger warnings about the use of racist language, you know, and they don't choose to read it, then, you know, I might think, well, that, that's a bad thing. People should read those books. But, do, and I, I hate to say this because this is going to sound like the worst thing possible. Why do we think that people continuing to read the books that we read is so inherently important? I love To Kill a Mockingbird. I did not read it in school uh, for various reasons that, I can tell you that the, the high school I went to, and I've said this before, integrated really late. The high school I went to did not integrate until 1971 or 1972. And uh, I started high school in 1982. So at my high school, you know, there was a conscious effort to, devo to avoid things which might create uh, racist tension or racial tension at our school. For instance, we didn't have homecoming queens because the thought was that it would divide people up by race and who they voted for, etc. For a long time, we didn't do things like that. So I didn't read To Kill a Mockingbird in high school. I read it as an adult, and I'll tell you, as an adult, I think I probably enjoyed it far more uh, than I would have if I'd been forced to read it or had been a required reading in high school. So when we talk about, you know, these books and these trigger warnings and things like that, oftentimes what we're talking about is not forcing people to read these books. Well, I have some issues with forcing people to read these books. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know that somebody who is curious about To Kill a Mockingbird is going to pick up To Kill a Mockingbird and let's say it's printed with trigger warnings, open the front page and go, oh, I'm, I'm not going to read that now. As an adult, I'm not going to read that, and if they are going to avoid reading it, I, I would guess they probably aren't going to read it, weren't really serious about reading it anyway. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? I, I, mean, I hope that, that that makes sense. I just don't think we're going to warn off a lot of people who want to read books that we think of as important. And again, I have issues with that idea. Uh, that a lot of adult readers are going to be warned off, and I'm uncomfortable with the idea of forcing uh you know, high school student readers to read things because we think that they're important. I'm not sure that we uh, necessarily are, should be in the business of, of doing things like that. So a third question, something that, that, I, uh, that I also thought about is, will then uh, trigger warnings become a tool of censors? Will they be a way for censors to prevent things from being published uh, merely because they, you know, contain scenes of violence or things that would be traumatic to people or because they contain depictions of racism, etc. And I think that, you know, there is some, uh, I, I can see why some people be concerned that would be true, but this is one of those occasions where I think that, that, that history uh, shows us that that would not happen. Uh, we have a motion picture rating system, which replaced an actual code that, you know, required movies not to show all kinds of things. We have a rating system uh, in which we rate movies based on their content. And a lot of people see that as censorship, but I would challenge you to, to think about the movies that come out in the United States of America and elsewhere that get ratings and are shown uh, on streaming services or shown in movie theaters and ask yourself, you know, are those movies really being censored? And, and to bring up the movie that disturbs me the most, I mean, we, there is a movie called Human Centipede. I'm not sure that censorship is a problem uh, because of that. And if you're suggesting that, well, some people would like to do a lot worse in movies, well, okay, make that movie, but you know, don't expect businesses then to uh, want to show it in their theaters. And you know, to me, that the movie rating system has proven that that kind of censorship really isn't that pervasive and really isn't preventing. Uh, movie makers, etc., for, for making the movies uh, that they want to make, that there's plenty of explicit uh, content and violence and sexual violence in movies all the time. And even though the warning systems, even though the warnings rating system is there, 
it's not preventing people from consuming that the, the, those movies. Probably more, I think, uh, directly related to this are the parental advisory stickers that are put on uh, music, or, and there used to be albums and CDs, and put on the cases of video games. Uh, these rating systems uh, have not done anything to make the lyrics of music less explicit. I'll just point out, you know, the WAP song is out there, uh, and it was incredibly popular, and it doesn't seem to have affected, you know, the sales of that song at all, that there are all kinds of, uh, of musical forms that have incredibly ex explicit lyrics containing violence against women, and that doesn't seem to be deterring those artists or those record companies or consumers from, from purchasing those. <laughs> I was in high school during the Satanic Panic. I don't know if you know what that is, but during the time period which you know churches were worried that there was all this Satanism and music, etc., in all these places, and I'll tell you, nothing made me want to, you know, listen to Black Sabbath more or listen, listen to Iron Maiden more or whatever it was than the idea that me doing that was somehow a form of rebellion. Uh, so again, and you know, when you're an adult, again, I don't think that those things are going to dis dissuade you from consuming uh, what you want to consume. So I think history suggests these trigger warnings will, will have... Uh, my, you know, a mild effect to actually no effect. And if anything, you know, the trigger warnings themselves may then feel free writers up uh, to write uh, more without uh, or with, with fewer uh, guardrails because they think, well, I can write whatever I want to now because the trigger warning covers me. The trigger warning in the front of the book says, don't read this, this is going to upset you. Therefore, I can write whatever I want to write. And I, I think that may actually, in the end, free writers up to uh, write books that are that uh, otherwise they might feel, you know, uh, hesitant to write. Another concern I had was, you know, will this mean that we only publish boring, bland books that contain, you know, no violence and no traumatic stuff? I, I seriously doubt it. Uh, you, I think you will, if, if YA adopts this system more broadly than apparently it has, I think you will see YA becoming more bland. Uh, perhaps for a while, but the truth of the matter is publishers publish books to make money. They're going to publish the books that make money. If the books that make money are bland and boring, they're going to publish bland and boring books. But I mean, in all honesty, are bland and boring books going to make money? No. Uh, the books contain the things which seem more real, which seem more exciting, which are more upsetting. Uh, those are the books that are going to get published. You know, there's been no, uh, despite our, you know, so the perceived power of social justice warriors, there's been no slackening in the horror genre or in true crime or in anything else. Those books, or in, you know, extreme right wingers getting their books published, those books are still published despite, you know, what may be the effort of social justice warriors to prevent it. That's still going on. I just don't think we're going to see, you know, boring books get published over and over again for the simple reason that publishers want to make money. Um, and so the last thing I'll point out is just kind of a practical thing, and that is that, you know, you print, print these trigger warnings in the front material of the book, a lot of readers don't even look at the front material of the book. I mean, do you always read the dedication? Do you always read the preface, the foreword? Do you look at the title page? Do you look at the publication page? And e-readers actually make it even easier to skip over the front material in books. So, you know, as far as the front, as far as how effective this will be at either one saving people from trauma or two uh, creating a new form of censorship, I, I have some serious doubts. So, for me, I still think the idea of printing trigger warnings in books is an okay idea. I can live with it. I can live uh, without it, uh, in part because I think that. For right now, my thinking is the overall benefit outweighs the overall negatives. Um, that I don't think it will become an effective tool for censors. That if anything, I think it may be that writers may see it as a way to free themselves up from having to have concerns about explicit material or upsetting material or violent material in their books because all they have to do is slap a trigger warning on there and then they're covered. I don't think it's going to lead to publishers publishing books that are intended not to offend people because I think people, are, when they see these trigger warnings, are, some people are going to go out of their way to read books that they don't think that people want them to read because that's just kind of one of those things that people, particularly young people, do. So I, to me, the benefits 
uh, of something relatively benign like that outweigh the potential dangers. Anyway, those are my thoughts. I look forward to your comments in the comment section below. As always, thank you for watching.